Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over four worked examples showing you how to do problems involving lifts. Now, if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic, and that way you'll be able to apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get started. The first two questions we're going to look at are multiple choice questions, and the last two questions are extended questions. Question one says that a person stands on bathroom scales in a lift. The scales show a reading greater than the person's weight. The lift moves A, upwards at constant velocity, B downwards at constant velocity, C downwards and accelerating, D downwards and decelerating, and E upwards and decelerating. Well, if we draw a little free body diagram, we're going to have a force upwards, which is our reaction force, and the force downwards, which is our weight. And you'll see I've drawn the reaction force bigger than the weight downwards, because we're told in the question that the scales show a reading greater than the person's weight. We can also mark on our unbalanced force F, which is going to be upwards, because our reaction force upwards is bigger than the weight downwards. Now you should be thinking back to the theory video, and the fact that we saw there that there are two cases where the reading will show greater than the person's weight. So R is greater than W, which means that the lift could be moving upwards and accelerating, or downwards and decelerating. So if we look at our options here, the only option which matches one of these two options is D, which is downwards and decelerating. So our answer here is D. And just thinking about this to eliminate the other ones, constant velocity, remember that means we're going to have balanced forces, so we cannot have one reading greater than the other if we have balanced forces, so that eliminates A and B from our options. And then C, moving downwards and accelerating is going to mean an unbalanced force down the way, which means that our weight downwards will be bigger than the reaction force upwards. Similarly for option E, upwards and decelerating, remember that also means we're going to have an unbalanced force downwards if it's slowing down as it moves upwards. So that means that our weight downwards would again be greater than the reaction force upwards. So the only one true here is D. Question 2 says that a person stands on a weighing machine in a lift. When the lift is at rest, the reading in the machine is 700 newtons. The lift now descends and its speed increases at a constant rate. The reading on the machine A is a constant value higher than 700 newtons, B is a constant value lower than 700 newtons, C continually increases from 700 newtons, D continually decreases from 700 newtons, and lastly E remains constant at 700 newtons. So technically from the question at the so technically from the question, this part here, where it tells us the reading in the machine is 700 newtons when the lift is at rest, that is essentially telling us the weight downwards as well, so we're going to know that the weight downwards is 700 newtons. Now if the lift descends, that means it's moving downwards, and if its speed is increasing at a constant rate, that means it's accelerating. So the case we're thinking about here is a lift moving downwards and accelerating. Now if it's moving downwards and accelerating, then it must have a bigger weight downwards than it has reaction force upwards. So drawing this in a free body diagram, we have a smaller force upwards, which is the reaction force, and a bigger weight downwards, W. So that means our unbalanced force F is going to be downwards. Now at rest, we can say that the reaction force is equal to the weight, which is equal to 700 newtons, which we're told in the question. But the lift is moving downwards and accelerating, so in this case, the reaction force is less than the weight, or the weight is greater than the reaction force. And the fact that the acceleration is constant, the reading on the machine, i.e. the reaction force, has got to be a constant value lower than 700 newtons. So you won't be seeing a continually changing value on the scale. Question 3 says that a Newton balance hangs from the ceiling of a lift with a 5 kilogram block attached to it. The lift starts from rest and accelerates upwards for 3 seconds at 1.5 meters per second squared. It then moves at a constant speed. Calculate the reading in the balance when the lift is A at rest. Well, we're going to sketch out a little free body diagram here to begin with. So drawing our lift, then going to draw a little line to represent our Newton balance, and then a block of 5 kilograms. So upwards, we're going to have our reaction force R, and downwards, we're going to have our weight W. So at rest, we're going to have balanced forces, so the reaction force upwards is equal to the weight downwards. And we're told that the lift accelerates upwards to begin with, so it's going to have an unbalanced force F upwards. Now, to find the reading in the balance when the lift is at rest, we need to work out what the weight is to find out what R is. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find weight. We know that the mass is 5 kilograms and G on earth is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. So writing down our equation, we can say that R is equal to W, which is equal to mg, just because R is going to equal W in this case. So substituting in our numbers, we get 5 times 9.8, which is equal to 49 newtons. Part B says calculate the reading in the balance when the lift is moving at a constant speed. 
Well, remember if the lift is moving at a constant speed, again we're going to have balanced forces by Newton's first law, so we must be able to say that r is equal to w as in part a, so this equals 49 newtons. Part c says calculate the reading on the balance when the lift is accelerating. Well, remember from our free body diagram, we've got an unbalanced force f upwards, so this means that our reaction force r is going to be bigger than our weight downwards. So we can write our unbalanced force f in the form of f equals r minus w because r is bigger than w. We can then rearrange to find what r is by adding w to both sides so we get r equals f plus w and then what we need to do is replace f with ma since f equals ma and we don't know what f is yet. So doing that we get r equals ma plus w and substituting in the numbers we get 5 times 1.5 plus 49 which we just worked out earlier and if you put that into your calculator we should get 56.5 newtons. Lastly, question 4 says that a person of mass 65kg stands on a set of scales in a lift. Calculate the reading on the scales if the lift A moves upwards at 4 meters per second. Well in this case, although it doesn't explicitly say it, the speed must be constant. So we can then work out what the weight downwards is to find out what the reaction force upwards is because the two will be the same, balanced forces. So we're trying to find what the weight is. We know that the mass here is 65 kilograms and G on earth is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. Writing down our equation and again stating it as R equals W equals mg because the two are going to be equal here, we can then substitute in our numbers to get 65 times 9.8 which equals 637 newtons. Part B says to calculate the reading on the scales if the lift accelerates upwards at 2 meters per second squared. Well if the lift accelerates upwards then we must have an unbalanced force upwards which means R is bigger than W. So we can write this unbalanced force F as F equals R minus W and so rearranging for R just like we did in question 3 R equals F plus W and again we can replace F with MA since we don't know what F is so we get R equals MA plus W and substituting in the numbers this equals 65 times 2 plus 637 which equals 767 newtons. For part C we want to calculate the reading on the scales if the lift accelerates downwards at 3 meters per second squared. So if we're accelerating downwards this time then the weight downwards must be bigger than the reaction force upwards. So the unbalanced force will be acting down the way this time. So this means we can write our unbalanced force this time as F equals W minus R. So if we want to find R this time we have R equals W minus F and then we can replace F with MA since again we don't know what F is. So we get R equals W minus MA and substituting in the numbers we get 600 37 minus 65 times 3. Remember to do the 65 times 3 part in your calculator first and then take it away from 637 to get 442 newtons. Part D, we want to calculate the reading on the scales if the lift decelerates downwards at 2 meters per second squared. So if the lift is decelerating downwards, that means that it's slowing down as it moves downwards, so it must have an unbalanced force upwards. So this means that R up the way must be bigger than W, so we can write our unbalanced force F as R minus W, just like we did for part B. Now because we've got the same acceleration as in part B, we should be able to notice that this is going to give the same answer as what we calculated in part B, so we don't have to do any further work. So R is equal to 7 167 newtons which was our answer to part b and lastly for part e we want to calculate the reading on the scales if the lift cable snaps well remember when the lift cable snaps both the contents of the lift and the lift itself will be in free fall so the reading on the scale must be zero newtons because the lift and the scales will essentially fall away from under you so r is equal to zero newtons that's all for this video folks i hope you found it useful if you did give it a like subscribe and i'll see you in the next one take care Whoa!